Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Stu. Thank you. You know what tonight is? No. Tonight is our 24th program of this year. Wow. Yeah, I heard a wow. That was good. And yes, I mean, remember once. That's good, too. I like hearing clapping. Everybody else want to do that? There you go. So for those that don't know, because I do see some new faces in the room, my name is Stuart Schlossman, and I, too, have multiple sclerosis. And that's how this all began. But that's another story, and we can't get into that anymore. So it's not about me. It's about the organization, OK? So going forward, though, MS Views and News provides educational information for those affected by MS. Being affected, you are not just the patient. You can also be the caregiver or a friend or just another family member that needs to know what's going on with you so that way when and if you might be having problems that others can recognize this, you know, what's happening with you. So we also hope that other healthcare providers that are in the industry or having to do with multiple sclerosis can see also what is happening. Maybe they are new. Maybe they are a physical trainer or a physical therapist or an occupational therapist or something to do with multiple sclerosis that they need to learn more about. Well, these educational programs that we're doing will hopefully be able to teach them what is happening. And so if you go to like our YouTube channel, we have the MS Views and News Learning Channel on YouTube. We have over 150 programs right now on that website. All right, you go to YouTube, you type in youtube.com backslash MS Views and News, or you go to where we showed you at the beginning where there's the blogs and the videos, and you click on that from the website, you'll find the videos there. Whether it be about urology or about MS or about the symptoms of MS or the impact of MS on the family or about neuro-ophthalmology, and that's about the vision, okay, or about anything, uh, realistically, anything about multiple sclerosis, you will be able to find on that learning channel. And again, you could share that with family and friends, or if you do not remember what's happening at tonight's program, you'll be able to see this in about a week from now. So again, just remember to share it with everybody, share it with yourselves, and use it for however you can. Listen, tonight's program like all of our programs, are funded by a pharmaceutical company. And so for tonight, I would like to recognize the funder of tonight's program. That would be Genzyme, a Santa Fe company. So I and I hope all of you will thank them for being here tonight. Thank you. In addition to Genzyme, we always have our, our sponsors that are out in the hallway. And they're there to be able to provide you with information that you might need to know about the medications that they have. And so we always want to thank them as well. But you probably did that when you visited their tables. Tonight's format, without getting into a lot of things about MS Views and News, but tonight's format is different than we've done in the past because we have somebody speaking tonight that we've never had speak at one of our programs, and that is Michelle Alva. Okay, and she will be speaking with you. She's our spec second speaker tonight. Look, she gives a good hand for herself back there. That's great. <laughs> so then we're going to have Michelle Alva, and she's going to speak about a new complementary therapy that she's going to have for you. And I've heard her do this before, and I really, really think that you're all going to like it as well. So now, Michelle Alva. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, can, can everybody just take a moment to say yes three times? Yes, yes, yes. I am so grateful to be here and to share with you the best of the best of what I've learned over the past 20 years working as a physical therapist. I graduated when I was at the young age of 22. And I began working in a vegetarian restaurant and being exposed to holistic, integrative medicine practices such as yoga, mind-body medicine techniques such as meditation, using energy healing and sound, vibration, all forms of natural drug-inducing um, things. And I work on the other end of really tapping into the innate power that we are, that we actually have a pharmacy within us. And there's a lot that we can do to empower ourselves with tools that we can integrate into our daily life. And that's what my mission is in my lifetime, because I started off as a depressed teenager. My father moved when I was 12. My parents are divorced. And that influenced my whole life. And later on in my life, 
because I was struggling having my marriage survive, um, even though I was a successful clinician and loving my work, I looked older when I was married and in a dysfunctional relationship with myself. So I know how, and of course, that mirrored in all my relationships. Um, so I would like to ask you all some questions just to get a feeling for us. And when I do talks, I cater them to us, whoever shows up, because we're all here on purpose and we're all here together. So I invite you also, if there's any questions you have, feel free to raise your hand and we can all learn from each other. That's why we're here. So if you'd like also, can I just ask of you to be open to being open today to trying something new? Yes, yes, yes. And are you willing to let go if you have been holding on to some judgment, guilt, or shame? Are you willing to be open to releasing that weight? Yes, yes, yes. So can I just hear everybody say yes three times? Let me make sure you're getting it. Yes, yes. So what I have found is when I ask my clients these questions and they say yes three times, they're literally strengthening the flow of energy through their body. Has anybody here experienced acupuncture? You can raise your hand. Has anyone here meditated, done meditation, mindfulness meditation? How many of you have learned breathing exercises to calm and relax your body? Okay, so there's a muscle in your body that you literally can use to stimulate calmness in your nervous system. And it helps to boost your immune system, and it also helps to secrete your love hormone, the pleasure hormone, which is also the healing hormone. Can anybody guess what muscle this is? It's right in between your rib cage. We're using it right now. Your diaphragm. Has anybody learned how to use their diaphragm throughout its full range of motion? Okay, you're supposed to say yes, yes, yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what I have found, because I am a physical therapist who's also a yoga teacher, I also love to experiment and research and make sure that the things that I'm doing work. And I pray when I do the sessions, I work as a healer. I'm very intuitive, I'm very empathic, and I get information from my clients without talking to them. It just comes what I need to do and I'm guided. And what I have found is that when a person learns how to use their diaphragm through its full range of motion, they feel themselves fully. So I ask you right now, are there parts of yourself that you don't want to feel? Yes, yes, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Because why? Why wouldn't you want to feel your whole self? Anybody want to share? It hurts. Who wants to feel pain, right? Anything else? Does anybody feel resentful towards their MS? Raise your hand. Okay, when we own it and we just acknowledge it, we're actually healing it. Did you know that? The first step is acknowledging. So your MS wants you to love it because it's in you, it's your body, right? And does anybody here feel that they're a victim of MS? Yes, yes, yes? Okay, so does anybody here believe in a source, a creator, God, a higher power? Just raise your hands. And did you know that that higher power loves you so much? Yes, yes, yes? Well, there's, there's something really, am I, the microphone? Oh. Well, if you all don't mind, I'm gonna take my shoes off because I work best without high heels. <laughs> okay. Um, the relationship that you have with your body, for example, if I can't stand my thighs, which a lot of women, I, I think, don't, or my belly, my muffin top, or my wrinkles or my cellulite, and I'm constantly hiding that part of me, my immune system is going to be lower. And I'm going to feel more stressed out because I'm not accepting myself. So regardless if I have MS or acne, and I'm not loving that part of me, I'm saying, I only like you the parts that I like, I but I don't like you the parts that I don't like. So the body feels stressed. Did you know that? 
When you're not loving and accepting a part of yourself, whether it's a quality you have, like me, I definitely feel, uh, I talk too much sometimes <laughs> and I don't listen. But for me to heal that is for me to say, you know what, this is a weakness of mine and I can work on it. But even though I'm not perfect at it, I'm aware of it and I'm still gonna love it because it's me. I can't avoid that part of me. That's just, okay? So the more you cultivate a romance with your MS, the more you love it, even though that might sound way out there. Does that sound impossible for anybody? Are you willing to love your MS? Yes. Three yeses. Are you willing right now to be open to being open to loving your MS a little bit more than yes. before you came here? Yes, yes, yes? yes. yes, yes, yes. Okay. And are you willing to invite a different relating with MS? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Relating as a close friend? Re relating with it as a lover, a romantic partner, having a juicy relationship with it. How many of you right now are saying, is she nuts? <laughs> so I work literally every day with people that have cancer, MS, depression, anxiety, have had an amputation, and we work on healing from this. We're not curing it. The foot will never grow back, right? Or diabetes. You know, some people are really upset that they have to check their blood sugar all the time. So I have it. I have it. It's there. So I may as well create the most loving rapport with it. If you're stuck in an elevator with somebody, you may as well get at peace with that person, right? So the way that we perceive whatever it is that we have, whether it's MS, whether it's stretch marks, whether it's a big nose, um, the way I relate 24 seven with myself is actually affecting the drug, the chemicals that I emit in my body. So the goal in the work that I do is about raising the levels of love flowing through us. Does anybody here know physiologically how to raise their love hormone? Have you learned any techniques on that? Just curious. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Are any of you sexually active and having orgasms? Let's just own it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And you don't have to have a partner to do that. I mean, women, we have 9,000 nerve endings in our clitoris, 9,000. And those 9,000 in that tiny little spot stimulate oxytocin. Did you know that? So when the doctor was talking about toys, and vibration stimulates the love hormone. Does anybody here use a vibrator? <laughs> well, have you seen those muscle vibrators? I'm not, t I actually was talking about the muscle vibrator right now. Have you ever seen those little vibrators? They, you can just vibrate your shoulders, um, or even there's, uh, there's mats that you can buy at Bed Bath & Beyond that you can lay on. Has anybody ever heard of that? Yeah, so vibration stimulates oxytocin, the love hormone. And we're all going to actually turn on our vibrator right now. I'm going to show you how right now. Okay, so you're going to do this. I don't know what you all were thinking. I thought only Stu was like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so right now, take one of your hands, and you're just going to start vibrating, shaking your hand. Just one hand, okay? Keep going. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do some brain gym. You're going to take three sniffs while you keep shaking your hand. So we're going to go like this. And then you're going to open your mouth and let out a sigh. Ah. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Ah. Believe me, I'm going somewhere with this. Just keep going. Are you willing to keep going right now? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, keep that same arm moving, okay? Inhale, inhale, inhale. And then you're going to inhale, inhale. So now we're going to do five sniffs. We're going to go even further. And you're going to hold it for a little longer. And then you're going to let it go. So we're going to intensify here. Inhale, 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 inhale. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And then let it go. Ah. Shake a little more. 
And now you're going to stop shaking and bring your arms out in front of you, both of them. Close your eyes and let me know which arm feels more lighter, softer, energized, relaxed. Which arm? The arm that you just kept vibrating or the arm that was still? The vibrating arm. So do you notice how vibration helps you to feel lighter, more energized? What else? Freer? So did you know that we are vibrating molecules of energy? When we look at ourselves under an electron microscope, that's what's happening right now. Right now in our bodies, we're all vibrating molecules. And love is a higher vibration. The frequency is higher, faster. When we judge, criticize, analyze, when we're hard on ourselves, any people hard on themselves here? Raise your hand. Let's own it. Who's hard on themselves? We vibrate at a lower frequency. You know when you feel really down on yourself, do you feel uplifted and light? No, we feel heavy and down, right? So your thoughts throughout the day, it's important to notice your thought diet. Check in with yourself. Something I tell my clients is every time you go to the bathroom, you got to go there anyway. Check in with yourself. How am I being towards myself? Am I being loving or am I being hard on myself? And you can do this breath, the sniff, 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 to control, alt, delete your nervous system. It's a way of rebooting your nervous system. A quick sniff is actually easier than a long inhalation. It's, it requires less ATP, less energy, to do a quick concentric contraction than a slow and long one. So, if you're feeling fatigued, you can lean back into your chair and do some sniffs. Inhale, inhale, inhale. Short, short, long. So that you're breathing in fully. Hold it for as long as you can. And what you're going to do now is you're going to think of something that weighs you down. So it might be a person, it might be something about your body, it might be resentment. Choose something right now that you want to release the weight of in your body. So we're going to use this breath, combine it with our intention and our sound. And this is a way of moving and clearing emotional stress. Anybody here have emotional stress? Guilt, shame, you've had trauma, pain, we're resentful about our pain. Sometimes we judge ourselves because we judge ourselves, or we're hard on ourselves because we're hard on ourselves. Does that ring a bell to anyone? So are you willing to let go of the weight of your own thoughts and feelings right now? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Okay, so can everybody close their eyes for a moment? We're going to go here to our soul connector. Your diaphragm connects you to your soul. Anybody here Jewish? No Hebrew? Raise your hand. Okay, well, in the Hebrew language, soul and breath are literally almost the same word. They're separated by one letter. The way to connect to your soul, which is your essence, which is not your name, your degree, your age, it's beyond time, your soul, your essence. You know the part of you that just knows things? The part of you that witnesses you? That's your soul. So a way to connect to this part of you that is timeless, that is formless, that is pure love, is through your diaphragm. And what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you this amazing exercise. It's the most powerful one. We're going to put our hands here, because guess what? Aside from the genital area, the chest and the abdomen area has the most receptors for the love hormone. Did you know that? So simply massaging your chest area in between the nipple line and your abdomen on a daily basis, you're giving yourself a boost of love hormone, healing hormone. This hormone also helps us to focus and it accelerates our healing ability. So if you're having a hard time, a hard day, you're feeling tired, pissed off and angry, you're just gonna start massaging yourself. And of course, underneath the, the clothes is even better because you're going skin to skin. You can use coconut oil, grapeseed oil, have it next to your bed. And literally, you can do this ritual after you take a shower. 
So using this as a practice, massaging your chest, your heart, your gut. Anybody here have gut issues? Maybe you're constipated, irritable bowel. You don't have to raise your hand. You can say yes, yes, yes. So sometimes when we judge, criticize, analyze, we're stressing out our body. And doing this is a way of saying, I care about you. You matter to me. I'm going to put time and effort into you. And then you're raising your hormone of love. And I recommend doing this nighttime when you're going to sleep, you're in bed anyway. Take your hand and you can see the word love on your palm. You can see the word forgiveness on your palm or acceptance, compassion, whatever you're feeling you want to put into your system. And then that information you're putting then into your body and you can massage yourself like that. So imagine yourself every day making time to boost your immune system, to calm your nervous system, to help your digestion, to help yourself raise your love hormone. What, what's possible when we do that every day? You're going to let me know. You're going to email me, right? Do this every day. When you wake up in the morning, do you wake up smiling saying, thank you, God. Thank you, divine. Thank you, nature. I'm so grateful that I'm alive. I love my mattress. I love my comforter. And then you look around the room and you're just like, I have everything I need. I have everything I need. This is something that it's taken me my whole life to realize that I have everything I need in every moment. That's why I have it, or else I'd have something else. So there's certain ways of thinking and believing that are going to help me feel safe and relaxed. Does anybody here feel they're lacking something? Let's just own it. Do you feel you're lacking something? That you want to achieve something more, and then you'll be happy. I surely did. I've taken so many trainings in so many different things that literally I got burnt out from learning. Okay, And the learning, because I was being motivated because of my low self-worth. Because my dad left when I was 12. Darn it. So my whole life, I was this overachiever person that was being guided by the wrong. It wasn't from a place of love. It was from a place of fear. And I feel that my life is not a waste. I know that a lot of us are living this way, and it's exhausting. So I had my midlife crisis, thank God, before I was 40. And now, these certain concepts touching myself throughout my day. If somebody asks you a question, do you usually say yes when you really want to say yes? Or do you say yes, but you really want to say no? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Any people pleasers here? And you, you know that feeling of when you say yes to something you really don't want to do? That literally your body, your soul, I think, is saying, why'd you say yes? I don't want to do that. So when you cheat on yourself chronically, you lower your immune system. Did you know that? When you say yes and you really want to say yes, your posture changes. Our heart expands because we're honoring what we feel. I created this guided meditation you can access for free on my website. It's Breathe In Love. And that one literally teaches you to connect to the physical heart and the emotional heart. Anybody here ever been heartbroken, cheated on, separated, broken hearted? Some of us never heal our heart. We walk around with a crumble. The heart looks like a crumbled sheet of paper, and it's contracted. So did you know that if you don't forgive, you literally can't really live your life to the fullest? So there's things that are affecting your MS that have nothing to do with MS. So I'm here to say, Make sure to fall in love with whatever you're feeling in every moment because that is actually going to help you heal and lower the symptom potential. Do you notice when you get those fatigue epi epic episodes that you're more stressed out, that your body's actually trying to give you a sign that you need to slow down? Or does it happen just out of the blue? I'm just curious. Does anybody want to share both. Yeah. So just to recap, um, what can you do every single day with your diaphragm to help to stimulate your immune system, make you feel more energized, and to flow your emotions? The breathing. Inhale, inhale, inhale. 
And then creating a sound, ah. And you can choose whatever sound you want to create, because creating sound is a way of releasing stress, tension, and pain. Just like when we stub our toe and we say, ow! So you can go even further and create your own sounds, and that'll help you to release and flush the weight of whatever it is that you're feeling. Something else, massaging your chest and your belly, vibrating, vibrate your body, spend a couple minutes, especially the parts that don't feel uplifting to you, if you can, even shaking in your chair, and this is actually really good for your pelvic floor muscles and your corset muscles. There's other, th other things that you can do, like singing. Does anybody here sing? When we sing, we're stimulating oxytocin. And playing music, listening to music, is a really powerful way to get your love hormone up. So use, music is movement. So especially if you're not moving a lot, music is a great way to get yourself to move internally. So thank you so much. Anybody have any questions about these techniques? Yes? Who has a question? Jill? Oh, wait a second. You talk about boosting the immune system through all of these techniques, and we with MS have an overactive immune system. So are you talking about the same immune system or something different? Well, this is the thing. Everything I just talked about raises your love hormone, and your body loves you so much that it's not going to throw you off balance because you have too much love hormone. Love hormone is really powerful, and I'm sure people here have been in love and in a healthy love relationship, probably with someone, right? And miracles happen. When we are in love, we don't feel sick. We don't feel pain. We're numbed out to it because there's so much love. So your body is not going to go against you. And it's, it's, I don't think you can hurt yourself with too much love. Your body's really smart. It's actually a lot smarter than what you give it credit. It's our mind. It's us. What's my relationship to my MS? Am I negative about MS? So what I'm trying to say is, you have this, you may as well love it and create a new relationship or be open to it at least. And uh, listen to the guided meditations. I've put a lot of time and energy into those. Um, they're on my website, michellealva.com. You close your eyes, you lay down, and you listen, and it guides you to your body connection and soul and heart and whatever part of your body you're not feeling in love with to reconnect, to forgive, to create more compassion, to cultivate a new way of relating. Nobody can see this, but it's actually a big weight sometimes on us that no one can change except yourself. No matter how great of a healer or a physical therapist I am, I cannot make you reconcile and reconnect within yourself. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Michelle. Listen, Michelle was not here to bring out any kinky aspects, all right? She's that's what here. You're here for. She's that's right. That's what I'm here for. Okay? So Michelle was only here to help bring you an alternative complementary therapy. And it does work. For those that don't know where I get my energy from all the time, it's from listening to things like this and me trying these. And yeah, I go around the half the day grunting all the time. It's my release. Arr. That's my really, who said, oh my goodness? <laughs> yes, that's what I do. I go around grunting, and that's my release for everything. So find your own mechanisms that work for you, and let's thank Michelle again for being here. Thank you. Next, we have Jeff. And for those of you that are just getting around to drinking coffee, forget about it. He's going to try to get you up and out of your seat and do something. Okay, because now you have to work off some of those calories you just put on. So a lot of you have heard me speak before. I'm going to show you some interesting things. Um, some things you may know about me, some things you may not, but I was diagnosed with MS myself 17 plus years ago. So I know what it feels like to have MS. I kind of forget what it's like because it's just, it's just a label, you know. I, I try not to make it define me, but it is part of my daily life and what I do as a personal trainer. If you're wondering what this is, it is what it looks like. What does it look like? Rolling pin. Yeah. So I got a rolling pin. You got the dough? Uh, no. The flower? But I think you might have brought it, right? Yeah. Timer? Uh-oh. Yeah. Who's got the oven? <laughs> 
I'm not going to cook, but what I am going to do is I'm going to show you some simple things. How many of you have a timer? I don't care what kind of timer it is. Raise your hand if you have a timer. Everybody has a timer. Okay. How many of you sit behind a computer for a long period of time and get lost? Okay. How many of you guys just aren't raising your hand because you don't want to be that person? <laughs> well, if you sit behind a computer for a couple hours, it's not unheard of, is it? No. Chances are you're dehydrated, right? Why? How do I know that? Because if you're sitting behind a computer for a couple hours plus, chances are you're not drinking or else you would have got up or gone to the restroom, right? So you need to hydrate yourself. So that's something important. How many people here have not had any water today? This week? Okay, water is the most important thing that we can put in our bodies. You know, that's what we're mostly made of. So that's one thing when it comes to spasticity, when it comes to uh, pain, and when it comes to discomfort, and it comes to all kinds of other illnesses and symptoms, if you're not putting water in your body, you're doing a disservice to yourself. Water's okay to drink. Who, people say they don't like water. What's not to like? It doesn't taste like anything. It's just helping you. I mean, how could you dislike and not have something that has no taste? And if it has taste, put a little lemon in it or something. What I have here is a timer. So I'm giving you guys each a challenge, which is to buy a timer, $2. $2 can go a long way with these because if you set it to about 30 minutes every time you find yourself at the computer, all you gotta do is wait till it buzzes and then stand up if you can. If you can't stand up and you can raise, if you cannot stand up but you can raise your arm, let me see you raise your arm, okay? So if you can stand up, let me see you raise your arm. Okay, so when this buzzer goes off, I'm begging that either I see a bunch of hands raised or a bunch of people stand up, okay? I'm gonna put this down and this is gonna go into the cognitive MS part of the program. Because I'm gonna forget about it, you're gonna forget about it, but when it buzzes, you'll got, that's your tune. You'll remember, ah, that's what's supposed to get me up on my feet or put my hands in the air. A rolling pin. We're not gonna make bread or anything like that. Just oxytocin. <laughs> uh, a rolling pin is good for people who have spasticity or for uh, muscle pain or tightness. Cramps, anybody have cramps? Okay, get, ever get them in your calves, quads, hamstrings, neck? Like, I, I like not the, have that kind of pain in the neck though. You know, it's just, <laughs> just, uh, just, just like a cramp. But this is something good, and for you, not for doing to the person that's causing you to have, that's the pain in the neck. But it's good, you can roll it, it, you can roll it on the muscles for my, myofascial release. You know what myofascial release is? That's what you do for when you're getting a massage. A massage therapist is gonna get myofascial release. They get the knots out. So this is just like when you're rolling bread, or rolling dough, you're getting knots out. And you control how hard you're gonna press. This is the simple version of it. They sell something similar, this is called the stick. I'm still trying to figure out why, but. Um, this you can reach behind, you can roll it on your back, roll it on your leg, roll it on your hamstrings. Hamstrings get knots in them. Um, calves. Who wakes up with cramps in their calves? Come on. It's a common thing, it happens. If you have that issue, one thing I su can suggest is that you do not tuck your sheets in. You guys know that already? There's a whole group of people with MS, you guys are, you know, I'm telling you old news, right? Well. You know, there's so many different things that MS can do to us. We learned a lot of them from the doctor. Uh, we also teach a lot of them to the doctor every day when we see them. And one of the things is cognition. Many of the other things I can't remember. Okay, there's a lot of other issues that, um, you know, that it's, it's funny, but it's not. And I've been speaking for a long time. I've been speaking for Stu. I've been speaking for other organizations and, and all over the country. And I don't think there's been one talk that I've given that I haven't gotten to a point where someone asked a question or something, a wrong turn, fell off the stage. No, I haven't done that yet. But, um, and I'll forget where I was going with the talk. But I got these little things that I do to catch myself and bring myself back on pace. So you would never know it. And I've already done it once tonight. So I'm not going to tell you what it was, but I caught, I caught myself and, and used a, a little tactic that I do to get back online. It's the same thing as if you find yourself in the kitchen. How many of you have walked in the kitchen and you just forgot what you were going in there for? Okay, you, I got the best advice for you. If, if you're one of those people, you know what the best thing you can possibly do when that happens is? Get out. 
right? Because if you find yourself in the kitchen, you forgot what you're in the kitchen for, chances are you are not hungry. But if you start looking around, you're going to end up eating, right? Yeah. It happens. That's, that's, uh, that's called weight gain. How many of you guys have um, energy that you don't use? We probably all do. Yeah. Right. No, really. I mean, do you feel like you went through the day and you didn't use up your energy? No. I mean, there's times that you're fatigued. I understand that. Fatigue is part of MS. Most people with MS may experience fatigue. But I'm talking about your energy. You know, you have a lot of energy. You got to use your energy. Use your energy when you're able to use your energy because you know what happens to all the energy you don't use? It start, it is stored right here and right there in all the places that we feel bad about ourselves. That's energy not used. It's called fat. All, all of our energy is in uh, forms of calories and any calorie that you don't burn during the day, we tuck it away and store it as fat. So the less fat you have, the more energy you've used or the less you've consumed. Are we on the same page? Got any questions so far? All right, I'll show you some other things. Stretching, a calf stretch, I'll show you a couple ways to do a calf stretch. One is just to lean forward on your calf, this one here. So you're putting it into a stretch. When you're in bed and you get a cramp in your calf, uh, the best thing that you can do to relieve the cramp is to straighten your foot, raise your toes up, dorsiflex. So when you're laying in bed like this, and you feel like it's uh, cramping up and your toes are curling and, you're, and you want to bend, don't bend, straighten it out. It's good to keep a pillow or a, um, a, a towel or something by your pillow so you can wrap it around your foot so let's just say this was a towel. So you can, don't, don't try it at home. <laughs> just kidding. Let's say that was a towel you're pulling. That'll stretch your calf out and it'll help that cramp. This is a foam roller. Anyone seen one of these before? Yeah. On TV, right? No. Okay, good. I've never seen one on TV, that's why. These are great for um, getting myofascial release out by yourself. You can use them uh, at home. If you're able to get up and down off the ground, you can use them. If you use them with a partner, they're helpful. A uh, physical therapist may have done, help, helped you with one of these, or a, a massage therapist, or a rolfer. Anyone heard of a rolfer? OK. This is for people who have tight IT bands. This is uh, something that you can do to, to loosen it up. It's myofascial release. It can cause a lot of pain, but you control it. It's the same thing that you can do with the rolling pin, right? Same thing you can do with the rolling pin behind your, on your calf, or if you're seated, you do that. So one thing that's important about stretching is it's not the best idea to stretch as a routine a cold muscle. Do you guys know why? You can, exactly, you can pull it. And once you get hurt, you don't want to do it again. Yeah, and then you have a fear of doing it and you won't do it anymore. The best way for me to stretch is by exercising in full range of motion, which means if I'm gonna do a push-up and I go all the way down like this, I'm stretching my chest out. When I go all the way up, I'm stretching my back out. When I do a row, I'm pulling, stretching my chest, contracting my back. So all exercises in full range of motion are important because they allow you to maintain full range of motion as a function in daily living. Am I making sense? You guys with me? You guys just looking at me like this. All right, I'm ready for this thing to go off. But you guys still have about five minutes and then everything's gonna be crazy in here, right? We're gonna be doing jumping jacks and... Um, so, anybody have one of these? You do? You got everything, don't you? No. No? Um, I like sitting at the, on these at home. I like sitting on them that way. <laughs> but if you can see, these are good because they help remind you of posture. I'm going to turn around for a second, and I'm going to ask if you, how many of you guys think you have good posture, and then I'm going to turn back around. Well, I see a lot of people with better posture than when I was looking that way, right? <laughs> it really takes about 30 seconds or so, or just the thought of not, you know, something else 
for your posture to go back like this, which I see a lot of people that were sitting up straight are back to this, because it's a habit. But the worse your posture, the more spasticity you may have, back problems, um, front problems, you know, all sorts of issues that, that occur. Besides water, what's the other most important thing or just as important as water to have in your body? Uh, you guys are no help. No one got it for me. What else do we do? Think of what she was talking about when, we, when she was up there. What are you all doing right now? You're breathing, right? Well, think about bad posture. What does it look like? This? Right? Is this a really good, a good example of bad posture? Yeah. So what I want you to do is, for two or three breaths, after you say yes, 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 right? <laughs> I want you to bring your shoulders and, and get into a bad postured position, like this. Now I want you to take a deep breath. How'd that work out for you? <coughs> now what I want you to do is retract your scapula. Now take a deep breath. Which one was better? Second one, right? So every time you think that you're not able to catch your breath or you're not doing as well or you're getting fatigued, what if it's because you're not breathing enough? You know, what if your posture is so bad that you're like this, you can't get a full breath in and you're having to breathe more often where it's not as smooth and you're using the wrong muscles and you're using your costals rather than your diaphragm. All those things add up to being, you know, not the best you. And you want to be the best you at all times. Okay? It's, it's something that, for me, I, I love the job I have as a personal trainer. I love the people I'm around. Um, I, I like working. I, I like doing th what I'm doing right now. I like people to leave here feeling more energized and like, yeah, it's time. I want to do a little bit more. Every day I do a little bit more than I thought I was going to do. There's a few things I, I leave out every day too, which is what tomorrow's for, right? But there's always tomorrow. That, that's one of the most important things. There's always tomorrow. So stop it. I got a plan up here, okay? <laughs> there's always tomorrow. And if you do right now, think about right now all the time. Right now is when it's your time. You know, whatever you can't get done right now, you have tomorrow for, but right now it's important. Because you can't compare yourself to where you were 10 years ago. And if I asked everybody in here who exercises and who does things and, and what more you can do, what are you thinking about? Is there anybody in here thinking about what you were at your very best? Okay, I saw a few people smile and turn away from me. You know, it's, it's kind of funny, but that's what we do is we think about where we were at our very best, but what we forget to think about is how hard it, the work we did to get to that point was and how tough and how hard you pushed yourself to finally say, this is where I am at my very best. And at that point, up, oh, come on, let's stand up, raise your hands, move your hands around a little bit. Everybody who's doing this would not have been doing it if I did not have this timer on. This is great, right? Now you're doing it a little bit more now than you were before or earlier. Now you guys can have a seat again. Actually, you know what? If you guys feel like standing up one more time, please do it. Just to, just to see if you can stand up a second time. I just want to see whoever gets stands up the second time. You guys, you guys have courage. That's great. Because that's two more times that you stood up today than you would have had I not done that. So that makes me feel good. No, that's great. So if you do that and you had a timer and you're setting to set that timer and every 30 minutes you were to stand up, just think about how many times you'd stand up a day that you normally would not have. Right? So in an eight hour period, you're standing up 16 times where you might have only stood up twice or raised your hand zero times. It's important to do these little things because these little things add up to having a, a more positive lifestyle and have a little bit more energy. And the more you use, the more you have to use and the more you want to use. And, that, and the same goes for the, uh, the opposite. The less you do, the less you're able to do and the less you want to do. All right, I had a request from someone out there. So they're going to have to stand up and come up here. I'm not going to point anybody out, but <laughs> all right. First, I want you to look over there and give your consent to be on the video, if you don't mind, or else it's just going to be a, they're not going to hear any of this. So if you want to do it on video, you have to say, I give my consent. I give my consent. 
Okay. Now what I want you to do is take this. You made that heavier. I didn't make it heavier. It was heavier than the last one. No, it wasn't. Have you done it since the last time? No. That's why it feels heavier. <laughs> okay, what I want you to do is find whatever's bothering you straight on the ground and I want you to throw that down at it. Feel good? Oh yeah. Uh, see, that's something that's simple. It's a, it's a medicine ball and it's a soft medicine ball and now it looks like a pancake, right? But it, it goes back to form. But if you drop something like this on your foot, that it's hurt. not gonna hurt. Come on, what do you mean that would hurt? Yes, it would. Will you please get that for me? Can you hand that to me, please? Thank you. Aha, you see, I got your exercise and you didn't even know it. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly, thank you. But I want everybody to give her a round of applause because she was brave enough to come up here. Some other things that you can do when it comes to flexibility training or just movement. I was talking about warming up. You can make a full exercise routine based on warm ups, but what's this? Furniture uh, mover. Okay, how many people knew that was a furniture mover? I'm moving pretty soon, so I'm gonna get your names. You guys give me a hand. Um, no, come on, you volunteered already. <laughs> what I like doing with this is something as simple as just flexion of the knee. Because sometimes the knee, the hip flexors aren't working properly, so it's difficult to do this. We know with MS sometimes that's difficult. But you can still get some motion like this. And this can be something that you can do to your loosening up your hips, you're loosening up your, your knees before doing any kind of stretching. Stretching should not be too painful. It should be within your comfort zone. And if you, like I was saying, do a, a movement in full range of motion, you're getting that stretch. Hamstring stretches would be to target back here. Anybody get cramping back here? What do you usually do for it? Get up and get on, the, on my toes and just stretch that way. Try to straighten your leg out. and that, that's, one, that's a good way to do it. Um, one way that you can do it, do you remember when we were all in high school and they used to teach us to stretch our hamstrings out and they'd tell us to do the hurdler stretch, do you know what that looks like? I'm going to do it standing up so everybody can see. So let me see if I can, it looks like this. And then you're reaching down to touch your foot, does that ring a bell? I'm going to do it sitting down on the table on the, on the stage so you can see, but some of you might not be able to. You remember this one? where they would tell you to do that. Well, don't do that. That one's eliminated. That's bad. Bad, medial, bad in the medial collateral ligament. The modified hurdler stretch is this because it doesn't put the pressure on your knee and you can stretch the belly of the muscle. If you feel, if you feel a pain behind your knee, bend it because you're stretching your tendon and that's what you don't want to feel. You want to feel the belly of the muscle. It's also good to have somebody that's a um, helper to help you stretch this way and push, and as long as you trust them, they don't push too hard, and hold it there for 15 plus seconds. That's one of the ways you can stretch. But the more movement you do, the more flexible you may become. The less movement you do, the more confined you are within your own body. So movement's good. If you feel like you get tired and you're hit by that wave of, of fatigue, like Dr. Baker was saying, how many of you feel that? That's not the time to exercise. That's not, that's not the time to increase movement. That's the time to say, I'm gonna put it aside, I'm gonna do something else right now and do it later. Because it's so important to use that energy that you have when you're able to use it. So that way it doesn't end up right here, right? And you feel better about yourself. And one of the side effects of exercise is looking at yourself in the mirror and seeing what something you like, right? When you don't exercise and you don't do enough, you may look at yourself in the mirror and not like what you see. But it's important to like what you see when you look in the mirror because you know that is the only chance we have at life. If you do it right, once is enough, right? So guys, I have any questions? Any questions across the board? You guys all have questions. I saw you raising your hands before. Okay. You don't want me to exercise, do you? That means I have to run around. Okay. Um, when you talk about spasticity, the only time I have it is in the wee hours of the morning. So are you saying that 
I've either run out of energy while I'm sleeping, or what, no, what would I be the, the reason? Spasticity doesn't come from lack of energy. That's not what I was saying. I was just kind of combining the two together as, as part of the overall discussion. <clears throat> Is that what you were getting at? Yeah, why does it only happen like there's starting so, at three, four o'clock in the morning? There's so I, many reasons that like, it could be. Um, it, okay. it may be something to do with the, the bed you're sleeping in, the dinner you had the night before, the food you eat. Um, that's something that's a good question for your doctor because mm -hmm. in the middle of the night, having cramps can be things other than MS too. Because we, just because we have MS doesn't mean, I mean, I wish it did, doesn't mean that we're immune to everything else. So you need to talk to your doctor about that and see he might have an answer or might be able to send you in the right direction. <clears throat> so I don't know exactly why you're getting that at three o'clock in the morning. And I'm not saying that means you should get up and start running or anything like that. Right. But it is good to, um, to keep yourself but I'm uh, guess, stretched. I'm guessing I'm not the only one in the room who, with MS and spasticity, has been recommended and prescribed baclofen. And I don't, I don't know that it really helps all that much. Well, that's something that you gotta, yeah. you got to talk to your doctor about proper dosing, which medicine's right for you, and, um, or what activities are good for you with the spasticity and the meds that you're taking. But only, that's something that you and your doctor have to discuss because individually, we're, we're all completely different <laughs> with MS. We're like the snowflakes with the different, um, every snowflake looks a little bit different. That's how we are. And there's also so many different ailments that can cause cramping aside from MS. And we never want to overlook things and blame it on MS and miss the boat with the right doctor. So I hope I answered your question. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Do you all have nothing ailing you that you want to discuss? Come Jeff, on, there's Jeff, you did something. a great job. There's got to be something. You did you a great job, question. Jeff. I see that. Wait, Karen said it. Uh, you Jeff, you did a great job. Thank you very much, and Karen. All the right, now we got a question, right? No, the one thing that I wrote down here, and if Stuart wants to read it. Stuart doesn't exist. <laughs> you mean M MS Views and News no. wants to read it? She wrote that she wants to see more of Jeff's exercises to relax. So why are you asking me to read it? I said that Jeff's exercises to relax was imp what impressed me more than anything else today. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. He's, you just hit him. <laughs> he doesn't mind it, but I appreciate that. That makes it all worth it to come out here. You know, I'm above 50. I have problems reading now. <laughs> oh, we got a question back there. Whoa, there we go, finally. One from this table. Yes. Um, just your take on uh, exercise, motivation. How to Continue with, you know, keep your motivation up. Okay. How do, how do, you, how do you keep motivated? Yeah. I mean, um, everybody. Goals. Every, goals. Every, yeah. you, it's all about goals. If you reach a goal, that means that you've done two things. You've done what you've, you've accomplished, what you set out to do, and you've brought up a new goal, right? So you come up with a new goal, something that you're able to achieve, and then maybe something that's a long-term goal. But in, the, in between those two things, the most important thing you can do when it comes to movements and, and fitness is having fun. So you can have fun. And I want everybody to say, I can have fun right now. I can have fun. So if you can have fun, you can be motivated because there's not much more motivating than fun. I mean, that's what you, as a child, what do we do? We ran around and play go outside and play and do all that stuff. And it doesn't mean that one day you wake up and look at yourself and say, I can't do it anymore. You just kind of lose that path. So you got to go back to something simple that's going to be fun, even if it's uh, something as simple as grabbing a, a bean bag and throwing it and saying, wow, let me see. That was pretty far, but I want to throw it further and throw it a little bit further, you know, something like that. Like, so that way you have a goal. Your goal is to try to throw it further. In the meantime, after the 10th throw, you've walked around the block. So those are little things that you can, um, you can do that might motivate you to do a little bit more or write it down. I mean, are these things that you're looking for, like the, these types of motivation or, or having the ability to do something that you set out to do a month or two ago and actually doing it now because you worked hard enough to do it. And that's the best results that you can have that's gonna make you feel good about yourself. And social media, I'll tell you, social media is one of the best things for motivating yourself 
to do more because if you put something, how many people in here use social media? Facebook, Twitter, I don't know the rest of them, but um, Instagram. If you were to put something on there saying, um, I'm, I started working out today. I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. People are gonna give you feedback. Then they're gonna to wanna to know what you're gonna to do tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Now you're kind of stuck, right? Now you gotta do it. So now you're doing it, now you become a role model. Now you got 10 people doing it because you're doing it. It goes back to the whole philosophy of, or, or, this, or a thing that I wrote about a while ago. It's called uh, taking a multivitamin every day is what got me in the best shape of my life. Now I'm not saying a multivitamin take, to take a multivitamin every day and you're gonna be in the best shape of your life. But I wrote about the concept of, it's about a guy who talked to his doctor and the doctor, he asked the doctor, what do you think? You know, you think I should take a multivitamin? What should I do? And the doctor told him, well, I think that'd be a good idea. It would help improve your health. So the guy took a multivitamin. And the next day when he woke up, he, he got out of bed, shook up, you know, relaxed, stretched. He said, right, I'm taking a multivitamin, so I'm gonna eat a healthy breakfast now. May as well, since I'm taking a multivitamin, and I'm going to go for a walk. So he went for a walk. Two weeks later, he was taking a multivitamin, drinking more water, going for a walk, joined a gym, got in shape. A month or two later, he looks different. Everyone's asking him what's going on. He goes back to the doctor uh, three months later in perfect shape. Doctor can't believe it. Doctor said, w what happened? Well, I started taking a multivitamin, <laughs> right? Well, it's not the multivitamin. It's the concept of doing a little bit more and wanting a little bit more. And the more you want and the more you do, the more you can have. And that's where the motivation comes from. So find what the multivitamin is in your life. Take it and take it with you everywhere you go. Okay. Any other questions? Great. Round of applause for Jeff. Thank you. Very good. Didn't you find that motivational? Yes. Did you find anything about Michelle saying motivational? Come on. You all got to remember a part of the body you might have forgotten about. <laughs> right? <laughs> Listen, before we go any further with this tonight, we want to again thank Genzyme, a Santa Fe company, because this couldn't have happened tonight without their assistance. Thank you. And so we want to say thank you to all of you for coming down here tonight. Everybody have a great night. Thank you for being here. <laughs>